Welcome to Crosstalk Solutions. My name's Chris, and this is UDM Pro Complete Setup Video 9, where we're going to be talking about Unify Protect camera settings and basically how to get your cameras dialed in exactly the way that you want them. All right, here we are at the Unify Protect dashboard where we last left off. We had, we had adopted all of our cameras, but we hadn't really gone through any of the actual camera settings. One thing I wanted to point out about this dashboard, however, is there's these little icons here. So this looks like a person, you can see that. Uh, all of these other ones don't have icons. Basically what that means is if it does not have an icon, that is a standard motion event. But if it has a little person or a little car, that is a smart detection. So that's a person or vehicle smart detection. So for instance, if we look at you know, one of these videos, we'll just look at this one here, you'll see that a box shows up around me, essentially Unify Protect saying, hey, here's a person, right? This is your person right here. And uh, so that is the smart person detection. Okay, so we're gonna click on devices and then let's set up our G4 dome. So I have the G4 dome right here and I put it here so that we could use it for this video. In this view, if you click on the live view of the camera, we talked about the icons across the top and I mentioned the settings icon here. This is essentially the camera's display settings for, you know, by and large. There's some other stuff too, such as microphone. But so here we can turn the microphone uh, sensitivity up and down. We have our brightness, our contrast, our hue, saturation, sharpness, denoise, AE mode, orientation, which is if you have the camera oriented upside down, you can change the actual view. So we could turn off auto rotate, which auto detects if the video, if the view is upside down or not. And then we can turn on vertical flip and horizontal flip. So there's the vertical flip. And then here's the horizontal flip. So essentially you can have this camera kind of oriented whichever way you want. Something like the G3 Flex, for instance, uh, has a mount where you might be mounting it upside down and then you can come in here and just leave it on auto rotate or manually set it up so that it's you know rotated uh, either horizontally or vertically. We also have controls for the infrared. You can basically say we want the infrared lights, this is for night mode, to come on automatically or we can say let's have them filter only with no LEDs. So what's that mean? It means it puts the IR cut filter in place on the camera but you might have an external IR illuminator and not be using the IR from the camera itself. Really great setting, I'm glad they added that. Uh, then we have always enable IR or always disable IR. LDC lens distortion correction helps counteract any camera distortion. It's on by default, I say just leave it on unless you have a reason to turn it off. And then HDR is high dynamic range, balances varying lighting within the camera's capture, changing this value will cause the stream to reset. All right, so by and large, you can leave these settings default unless you actually want to make a change to the picture quality, you know, the hue, saturation, contrast, whatever, right? So if you actually need to make a change to any of those things, you can come in here and change it. But when I'm setting up systems, typically I just leave all of that default. This video is brought to you by Private Internet Access VPN. PIA has always been my own personal VPN of choice since way before I was a partner. Their service has always been easy to use and reliable, and I can be confident that my data is safe and secure given that PIA never keeps any user logs ever. When you surf the web through one of PIA's servers, your WAN IP address is masked, making it more difficult to track your online activities such as banking, logging into email, instant messaging, and more. You can also mask your location in order to stream your favorite content and access websites and apps from anywhere in the world. Private Internet Access has so many great features Features. They use open source VPN protocols such as OpenVPN and WireGuard. They have an internet kill switch, powerful encryption, split tunneling, and they even have an ad blocker that protects you from ads, trackers, and malware. Private internet access is an excellent service that I highly recommend. Check them out by clicking on the link in the description below and you can get started for as little as $2.08 per month. All right, now back to the video. Okay, so closing out of the player view, let's go over here and the, the side tray you get to by just clicking on the camera. So we're gonna click on the G4 dome. Here's the side tray. The overview just tells us how long the camera's been up, uh, you know, what firmware version it's on, 
what's the connection speed and frames per second, all sort of just general information about the camera. And then we can click on recording. So here we have our recording mode. We can record footage always, never, only record motion events, or only record smart detections. Always is gonna always record the camera. Never is gonna never record the camera. Motion events is only going to record and save motion captured events on this camera. Now, why would you wanna maybe do that? The reason is if you don't, if you have more cameras, then you have available hard drive space. So if you're, if you wanna go further back in time, but you need to sort of, uh, you know, reduce the amount of footage that you're taking in because your hard drive's filling up, you might wanna set some of your cameras to record motion events only and other cameras set to always record. Like, so for instance, if you have a small, uh, you know, retail shop, you might wanna set motion events only for, you know, cameras inside the store, but set something to always record for like the front door and a camera over the cash register, right? So you can kind of sort of mix and match the recording modes. For our case though, we're just gonna set this to always. Under recording quality, we've got high frame rate mode. And this says, gives you the ability to watch videos in slow playback and improves video latency. When enabled, some features are disabled such as 4K recordings, HDR that may decrease image quality. So high frame rate mode, again, use it if you need to. If you are taking footage that you want to have higher than 24 frames per second or higher than the maximum frame rate of whatever camera you're using, then you're gonna wanna turn on high frame rate mode, which gets you those high, the more frames per second, but it reduces the overall video quality of the captured image. So we got frame rate, image quality. Let's now go to motion detection settings. Now, when I'm setting up motion detection settings, I usually do seconds of motion tr uh, needed to trigger detection. I usually pop this up to two seconds. You know, let's do two full seconds of motion before we consider it a motion event. That way we're not capturing absolutely everything. You know, if a bird flies in front of the camera or just these sort of quick motion things aren't gonna get captured. But then I like to do seconds to record before the motion detection. Let's pop this up to like five seconds and seconds to record after the motion detection. Let's pop that to five seconds. So. The camera's always recording, right? And what this basically is saying is when motion is detected, so if two full seconds of motion is detected on the camera, we're gonna consider that a motion event, which is going to basically take a clip of that motion event. The other two settings here, the seconds before and the seconds after, are how many seconds before and after the motion event are we recording as part of this motion clip uh, that is going to be handled separately. You know, you can click on it on the dashboard and stuff like that. Uh, so that's what these settings do. I usually do two seconds to trigger motion and then five seconds sort of on either side of the motion detected. Then we have smart detection. I have both of these turned on. So person detection as well as vehicle detection. Motion zones allows you to specify to only detect motion in particular zones. This can be really handy if, for instance, you are filming down a hallway and you only want to capture motion on that hallway. Or let's say you're filming, you know, a door and then a bunch of cubicles, right? And you don't necessarily want to capture the motion of the people that are sitting in those cubicles. You only want to capture the motion of people coming in and out of a door. That's where you could set up a motion zone. Another example of where you might want to use a motion zone is if you have an outdoor camera that's filming a walkway and above that walkway is a tree. You might wanna cut the tree out of the motion detection, right? Because if the wind's blowing and that tree's swaying in the wind, it's gonna trigger motion events. Whereas what you really wanna capture are people walking along the path, okay? So to do that, we say add motion zone. And so right now you can see that there's a pink hue over the entire picture frame. So we're gonna say add new zone. And now we can basically drag this wherever we want it. So if I wanna only capture someone coming in through my window here, I can drag the motion zone to only show this part of the screen. So if someone happens to crawl up on my roof and open my window and crawl into my office, I'm gonna capture that motion, but I'm not gonna capture me sitting here working all day long. So you can save that. You can also adjust the sensitivity. You can give it a name, all sorts of cool stuff. The smart detection zones work exactly the same way. 
Basically, if you only want smart detections to happen in a smaller portion of the frame than the full frame, that's where you would set up a smart detection zone. Privacy zones, on the other hand, work differently. Now, privacy zones are very helpful for areas where there are regulations where you cannot record say your neighbor's house, right? If you have a camera in your front yard, you might wanna set up a privacy zone to block out certain portions of the screen that will never be recorded. So you can say add privacy zone, and let's say that this window is something that I don't want recorded. Well, I can say add new zone, and I can drag it over here, and hit save, and now, notice what it did there. It just blacked out that whole section of the, of, the, of the picture, right? So now we can't see that. And again, so check your local laws and regulations for when you have a camera outside, whether or not you are required to block out, for instance, your neighbor's yards, stuff like that. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and apply all of those changes. And now let's click on settings. So under settings here, we can change the name of the camera if we want. So I can call this G4 Dome Office, right? Whatever we want to call it. Sensitivity of the microphone, or we can disable the microphone completely. Now this is only for cameras that actually have a microphone. Then we have the sounds and lights on the camera itself. If you have a camera uh, you know, that's out in the front of your house, for instance, like the G4 Pro camera, wherever that is, I've got it in the window back here. The G4 Pro has this like spinning, you know, blue light, blue LED on the front of the camera. It's very conspicuous, right? So you might want to just turn off the status light so that when it detects motion, it's not doing that spinning blue light, right? People don't know that they're on camera. Otherwise, they're going to see this weird LED light up on the, you know, on the side of your house or the side of your office, and they're going to say, oh, what is that? Oh, I'm on camera, right? So we want to try to be as inconspicuous as possible. Next we have RTSP, or the Real-Time Streaming Protocol. So this is useful for getting the video feed from your cameras out to third-party devices. So a third-party NVR, or you know, just something like I have a Raspberry Pi with a display screen that shows you know, a quad view of four different cameras. That's where you can use something like RTSP. So you can turn on high, medium, or low quality RTSP stream and when you turn it on, you get a URL. So for instance, what I can do here is use something like VLC, a third party application. I can copy this link, let's run VLC, and we'll say media stream, uh, click on network tab, paste in our RTSP URL, and then hit stream, next, 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 stream, and there we go. Stream. And there we go. Stream. And there we go. All right, mute that out. Okay, so now we have a third-party piece of software streaming from one of my Unify Protect cameras. All right, close that out. All right, so the next setting we have here is overlay information. And this is essentially the stuff that shows up on the camera video feed, right? So we have the time, the camera name, the logo, and the bit rate. So let's go back to our overview for a second. Save our changes, we're gonna click here. And here we can see that the default view is basically just a plain view of the camera feed with the Unify logo down here in the bottom right hand corner. Right, so now if we go here and mess with our different overlay information, we can turn on the time, the camera name. I like to turn off the Unify logo and I leave the bit rate off as well. So we're gonna apply that change. And there we go. We can see here now, it says the name of the camera and the time and date stamp in the upper left hand corner and the logo is missing. If you guys wanna see what it looks like with everything turned on, let's go ahead and do that, apply. There we go. So now we can see the bit rate and sort of, you know, information about the stream itself, the logo down here in the bottom and then the, uh, the name of the camera as well as the time and date stamp. All right, so I'm gonna turn off the logo and the bit rate again and apply those changes and we're back to the way that I like it. All right, here we can reboot the camera if we need to, and then we can also unmanage these cameras out of Unify Protect. Now, one of the other cameras that you can add to Unify Protect is the G4 doorbell, right? So it's basically like, almost like a, like what you would think of as like a ring doorbell, but it's the Unify Protect version of the ring doorbell. Uh, I am not going to go into the G4 doorbell as part of this video because I only have one G4 doorbell and it's on the front of my house. But 
Uh, I will put a link on the screen here as well as down in the description to my full breakdown and installation of the Protect G4 doorbell and all of that information is still valid. All right, that's gonna do it for the Unify Protect camera settings. In our next video, we're gonna dive deeper into the dashboard and all of those sort of left-hand icons that allow us to do all of the wonderful things in Unify Protect. All right, we'll see you guys in the next video.